The master mixer in Cubase is very straightforward. You open it by going into panels and choosing VST master mixer or you can or you can press control and the plus sign on the number pad which is what I'm going to do. This is your master fader with which you can control the main volume. We've done those things before. Here is the little um, effect section, the master effect section which you can um, call up like this. To choose effects you can either use this screen here or you can um, choose effects like this just by choosing them. Let's choose the reverb effect for example. You switch the effects on by doing this one. And if you want to um, monitor the, the effect of one of the effects on its on their own, then you can switch on the solo button here. Now we o now we can only hear the output of the collet effect. Now this is the output of the flanger. Dynamic section. You do all the effects in one go. And if you want to bypass this, Very, very easy. After the effects section with the bypass section here, you've got the typical save and load master effects elements that we've had on the on the mixer. And then it goes into the um, Apogee dither algorithm with which you can um, add some artificial noise to your tracks when you're dithering down from from let's say 32-bit or 24-bit recordings to only 16-bit files. Um, you, can, you can open the dither algorithm here. Depending on what version of Cubase you've got, you can either bring up the Apogee algorithm or just a standard dither algorithm. Normal is the standard dithering. Low means that the noise that's being added to the file is a little bit quieter. And auto black means, in this case, that, um, that whenever there are silence, parts on the track that no noise is being added to the silent parts. So let's stick with that one for now. And then you've got the option to choose whether you want to output a mono file or a stereo file. This is mono, you can see that it's mono. The faders or the levels are more or less the same. And in stereo, they're going up and down um, at their own will, so to speak. And you've got two options, so you can either export the audio as a file or just listen to it as a normal output and I've rooted mine to the um, outputs 1 and 2 on the sound card. Exporting audio as a file is very straightforward as well. Let's stop this one. See where my locators are. I've got the left locator in bar 9 and the right locator in bar 70. Um, sorry, in bar 42. And all I need to do to export a track would be to click on export audio. This little window comes up here. You can choose where you want to place your audio files. So let's um, let's select the masters, for example. This is where I keep my masters as an idea. You can give it a file name, master1, or something, something more exciting. It's entirely up to you. Um, save as type, you've got different output file formats, you've got the um, the ones for the Mac, the AIFF files, the real audio files, or you can even export it as an MP3 file. Um, I usually stick with the normal WAV files, different types of coding, PCM is the standard, you've got different other types of coding as well. And, um, and then you've got a few options down here, I've selected between locators, you could have selected um, selected parts or gone for a selection range but I'm sticking with between locators right now I can choose the resolution and if I was to burn the track onto a CD I'd have to choose 16-bit and 44.1 kilohertz for the CD standard and if I want to use the track in a, in a different editor for example or I want to add things to it then I might go with the highest resolution I can um, I've got here and the sampling rate needs to stay um, the same as um, 
as in theory, the, the, the song I'm working in. If I know I'm going to go into a song where the sample rate is higher, then obviously I can go for a higher sample rate, but then I wouldn't be able to use the same file within this song here because I'm only using 48 kilohertz. Stick with 48 for the time being because I want to import the track back into my arrangement. It says import to pool and also import onto an audio track. And I'm going to include all the effects on the master effects section and the automation, which we haven't talked about so far. There are three op options when it comes to creating files. You could create a mono file of the whole mix. You could create um, two, two mono files, one for the left side and one for the right side. This is the stereo split option. And you can also um, create a stereo interleaf file, which is the typical standard stereo file, where both sides, left and right, are part of one and the same file. You've got a few extras here. This is a new feature. Allow plugins to update themselves during export. Certain plugins can receive MIDI information as they as the track goes along. And if this one is ticked, it means that they can um, still receive that information while doing the calculations as well. So now all I need to do now is press Create File. And the Export Audio window calculates the file. And there's the file. Yeah, unfortunately I can't show you how the how the file actually um, exports and updates the image and everything. That's to do with the video capturing facilities. But you can see here now that the file is there. Master 1 and Cubase calls the track Mixdown. You could give this a different name if you wanted to. Master 1. Select a channel that hasn't been used, so that's not um, used with effects and things like that. So I'll choose channels 11 and 12. Bring up the channel mixer to double check. Remember I can't see them right now because of my view. So if we go into edit and see where they can edit channels 11 and 12 as well. There they are. No effects are on the channels. I could solo those channels and play the song. The only thing is these songs are going through the master section again, which means I need to switch off all these um, master effects. So this is the mass, the actual output. It's quieter than it was before because we're, we're reducing the volume of it twice by minus 16.3 dB. The first time we did it to actually create the file and now the second time this is happening while the file's um, playing. So in order to hear it exactly as we heard it before, we'd have to increase this one to 0 dB again. And as you can see, we've exported the file going from the left locator to the right locator. And these bits here at the beginning are missing in our arrangement. But we could have included those, obviously, by making sure the left locator was in front of the parts and the right locator was at the end of the part. There is another way of how to export audio tracks, and this is by going into the File menu and choosing Export, Export Audio Tracks. The same window comes up as we had before. Um, you can do the same settings and obviously if this one was um, a track in 16 bit and 44.1 kilohertz we could then take this one burn it onto a CD and duplicate it and sell it basically so I hope you have lots of fun with your exported tracks and wish you all the best with, with the sales of your tunes of course